Hey everyone, Montreal Natty here. This video is going to be a unsponsored review for the ASP Talon Baton. Um, the model here that I have is the one that I showed in Melee Active, which is BA three four one BLK. Now the baton is uh, it can get pretty expensive. Um, this this kind the ASP brand is very expensive. I think, if I recall, maybe it was $120. Um, but, you know, when it comes to martial arts, I really don't settle for anything less than Gucci. But to be honest, um, of the features that we're going to talk about here, I'm sure you could find pretty close to the same stuff and non-name brand things. Um, but you can, I think you can get the same thing at a cheaper price, is basically what I'm saying. Now, as you can imagine, the baton is not a weapon that's taught or seen in kickboxing so I'm gonna to have to use some fight IQ here in my review now fight IQ is a term that um, it usually refers to uh, a warrior's ability to understand uh, or create organize a protocol for use of a weapon that they're not trained in um, some people can be born with it but most people learn it um, in the dojo you know that that's kind of where we pick it up um, now I don't think that's too much of a con because uh, funny story, my youngest brother, blood brother, so not my stepbrother, but um, at the time they had these um, these new speed loaders, right? They were just coming out for revolvers. Typically everybody used this kind of HKS speed loader. So um, the way that it works is that, you know, there's a, there's a lock position, there's an unlock position. And so in the unlock position, you just put the, um, you put the rounds into the, uh, into the speed loader. Right, and after that's done, you just turn the knob, and it locks the rounds in place. And so, you know, it's perfect. So, when you run out of rounds, right, what you would do is that you would unload the gun. You'd get your HKS speed loader, pop them in there, get stuck a little bit, and then you load it again. And that was what everybody used. Um, when I was your, your age, uh, young like you. But at the time, a new one had come out. It was uh, Safari Land speed loaders. Um, so these ones are supposed to be more, uh, I guess just more rigid because with the HKS, you know, when the, when the rounds are in here, they shake a lot, you know, and they make a lot of noise, things like that. You'll also hear cases where if you, if you drop them, you know, it will, uh, the rounds will fall off, fall out, basically. Because um, if you look inside, there's like a little, you know, just a little thing gripping it. And so it kind of makes sense that if these fell, that it would, you know, the rounds would pop out of place. So I bought them. I bought the Safari Land. I got them for like 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum. And uh, I was going to, I was testing them out. You know, I was putting, uh, not real bullets, but like, you know, fake bullets, snap caps, I was putting that in them and in the instructions, right? In the instructions on the package, it says, okay, so you put the rounds in there and then you're going to flip it over <laughs> on a surface and you're going to push it down on the knob and, and turn it, lock it into place, you know, which that's possible. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice, but, but that's possible. But I, you know, I was new to it. So I'm sitting there struggling, trying, trying to figure it out. And my youngest blood brother, he walks, he walks by my room. He just, he looks in, <laughs> he looks in and he just goes, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, because I'm sitting here struggling, trying to figure this out. And so he, he's trying to be, he, he goes, well, what are you trying to do? It's like, well, so you put the rounds in there. This has to be flat. And then you push up on the knob and you turn it. And so finally he just goes, well, why don't you just do that then? <laughs> like, why are you trying to put it on a flat surface? He's like, just hold it like this, push up on the knob, and turn it. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, he figured it out like in five seconds. It was quite embarrassing. And let me tell you, my youngest blood brother, I don't think he has any interest in the martial arts at all. Like, he does not care. I don't think he's even thought about it. I don't think he's taken a, taken a step inside the dojo. So, you know, he doesn't know anything about martial arts, and yet he could figure out at the time, you know, for my generation, very advanced, you know, speed loader design for, 
for revolvers. So I'm not going to discount myself out just because I have no training in the baton. Um, hopefully a little around two decades of martial arts or kickboxing can hopefully make a, a good uh, reasonable program. Um, not to the real people that train this like uh, Kali, things like that, you know, the, the real martial art for a baton. Now there are two major categories of batons. The first is a friction lock and the second is a talon lock like this. And the difference is that the friction lock baton, it's something that it will, you know, when it's suspended, it's locked. And then to, to retract it, you actually have to hit a really, a surface really hard and it will allow that to be retracted. Now for a talon lock like this, um, the retraction comes from a button right here on the bottom, this button here. Um, when you hold that, then the whole baton can be retracted. And you do have to hold it all the way through. You know, you can stop halfway here and then it's going to be stuck there unless you hold it again. Um, same thing when it retracts the first level, you know, it, it, you, if you move around, it's going to move, you know, it's going to move around. So. Um, it's not like you can do like level one, level two, it's just, you know, fully extended. Now this model, BA341BLK, it comes in three sizes. The first is 40 centimeters, which is what this one is. You can also get 50 centimeters and 60 centimeters. Now for inches conversion, that would be 15 three fourths uh, open and seven inches closed for 40 centimeters. 50 centimeters is 20 inches open and eight and a quarter inches closed. And then 60 centimeters is 23 and a half inches open and nine three fourths inches closed. Now I chose the uh, shortest baton because small weapons tend to be harder to seize um, than, uh, than larger weapons. Um, also program compliance. Uh, something that's um, you know very concealable is gonna be carried more often than something that is not. You know, something that's awkward heavy tends to not be carried very often. And the number one rule of martial arts is that it has to be on you all the time. I think I've talked about this example before. So if you have, you know, a 38 Special, you have a 44 Magnum, this, you can carry this, but it's going to take a lot of work, you know, a lot of time, basically. And this one, you know, something like this, you can just throw in a coat pocket, which means it's with you all the time. Um, thereby, thereby fulfilling the role of program compliance. Now this model is the air weight, so it, it's lighter um, than I guess it's than I guess it's uh, original model, which is nice. Yes, the mass would help with power, but being air weight means that the strikes are going to be faster, harder to catch and block. Now the grip on this um, BA three four one BLK, it's foam. And this is a grip that can be replaced by the user. The other one, I believe, is Wave Maker. And uh, ASP does have a video on their, I think it's their YouTube, that uh, shows you how to do that. Not that complicated, but, I mean, I don't know. I'm the type of guy that would just pay you money and get to do what I want. <laughs> so, um, if you have a little bit of an engineer thumb, then I think you can you can figure it out pretty easy. Now, in regards to deployment, I find three types of deployment methods to be, uh, I think, most effective for the general person. So the first is gonna be an inside swing. The second is a downward swing. And the third is an outside swing. Now before we talk about the advantages of the three, three deployments. I highly suggest that you Google, I believe it's the Framingham Police Department Expandable Baton um, Report. It's a PDF file and it's a, it's just a great resource. It's a free resource. I mean, it didn't charge me anything when I clicked on it, but you know, it just tells you everything about the police use of the baton. It's got a really nice color coded graph. It kind of shows you um, the strike zones on the human body going from green, uh, yellow, and red. So green is kind of like, you know, temporary pain um, compliance on the, the enemy target. Um, yellow is a little bit more longer lasting pain. And then red is quite severe, possibly uh, life, lifelong um, pain. So 
keep in mind that we are not police officers and so um, we really want to stay away from the yellow and red zones. The only situation where I think it's acceptable for you to target those is if you're being attacked by multiple people, two or more, that don't intend to let you get away unharmed. Then yes, I think you can consider yellow and red targets. Um, but for the most part, again, we don't have the, um, what's it called? It's the, it's the power that police have, lawful order. Like when they tell you to get out of your car, that's a lawful order. So you're breaking the law when you don't do it. We don't have that power. Okay, so we don't want to hit yellow and red targets unless we're being attacked by more than one person and they really don't want you to let you go without serious injury. So in general, we'll stick with green target zones. So I said the inside swing is kind of like the best deployment. Um, it kind of puts you in a nice ready guard stance. Um, also, if you have to hit at the same time, you can actually hit the lower abdomen uh, immediately, which also happens to be a green zone. So you can hit that a couple times to make the person, the bad person, uh, guy or girl, uh, reconsider their actions. And then of course, um, if you have to, um, go to yellow and red targets. I believe uh, the ribs is a yellow target, so the plexus is a red target. But again, that's only if you're attacked by more than one person. Now the downward swing is good as well. The only problem is that there are no green targets unless you go all the way out and hit the person's shoulders. Um, typically everywhere from the clavicle bone, um, the, everything in the head is a red target, uh, you know, the ribs, things like that. Everywhere that the downward swing is targeting tends to already be yellow or red targets. So it's really not preferred, I would say, just because there's not a green target for you to repeatedly strike to get compliance from the attacker. Now the outside swing, um, I, I guess I wouldn't say that it's bad, but I would say that there are no targets to hit um, at the time of deployment, so I kind of just leave that out. Outlier, I mean, who knows, maybe it's good for something, but based on the 30 minutes I've trained with this, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really couldn't think of a situation where the outside swing was a mildly good idea. Now with single-handed weapons, you always have to choose between putting the weapon either in your strong hand or your weak hand. And I would say that for deployment that this should be face upside down in your pocket. So so in my pocket, right? If I'm going to put it in my pocket, I wouldn't put it I wouldn't put it like this in here. It would actually be upside down like this. That's the way that I would put the baton uh, in terms of setting it up for deployment. And then for strong and weak side, um I think most martial artists can tell you this. Um, so every human that's going to be in a fight, right? They're always going to have a strong side and a weak side. And basically, it's pretty simple. I'm left-handed, so my, my left hand and my left leg, they are my strong legs. They're my power shots, okay? And then my right side is, is not. So as a result, right, my right hand, my right leg will lead because I need the distance set up for my power shot, left hand, left leg. And it's the opposite if you're right-handed. So you would lead with your left side, your left hand and your left leg, okay? This is a universal principle of martial arts, okay? If anybody tells you that you don't have to do that, that you don't have to lead with one side, that's fake news, <laughs> okay? You have to lead with some side. Typically, your weak side is gonna lead, okay? That is a, that's a universal rule. I don't know any martial art that doesn't do that. You know, maybe, eh, maybe firearms, but it's kind of like a different, you know, different subject. Firearms, you know, some people will do the parallel stance and then they'll lean forward. When I was in armored car, they kept trying to make me do that, but I, it, it didn't work for me because I trained isosceles because isosceles stance is very similar to a martial arts stance. So that's how I shot, you know what I'm saying? And neither one's wrong. It's just, if I trained in this for 10 years, then why would I try something I've never done before? You know what I mean? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about putting the baton in your strong hand. So one clear advantage is that your strong hand is your strong hand. Um, it's, it's what you use the most if you go to the gym and you're struggling on the bench or something or pull up, you will tend to use your strong side more. And so your strong hand just has a natural tendency to have more you know, muscle fiber, motor neuron recruitment. And so it can generally produce more force 
than your your weak hand or, or you know your, your weak side um, there's also a higher probability of successful deployment so as you can imagine you know getting this thing to fully extend you really have to you know you really gotta muscle it you know what I mean and once again with your strong hand being your strong hand there's a higher probability that that will be successfully deployed um, another thing is that it's very easy to do follow-up attacks um, and it also leaves your your lead hand to attack as well. You know, um, I know the jab is not very popular, mm, not very popular. Uh, you know, uh, move to attack with. Um, typically for kickboxing and boxing, you use it for distance. But yes, some schools will teach you to strike with it, and so that's nice that you can kind of have a follow up attack after that. Um, of course, you can knee, you can kick. Uh, it'd be a little tricky, but you could certainly do elbows as well. Um, I think the only con is that the, you know, the weak hand doesn't really have a dedicated jaw position. Um, I mean, it can attack, you know, but obviously you want the attacks to come from here or your legs. And so your weak hand is kind of just like floating, you know. Same with your weak leg. It's kind of just, it doesn't have a job, a dedicated job. It's not sure what it's supposed to do. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about having the baton on your weak hand side. So I think the first pro is that you can actually have uh, your unarmed combat. You can have your martial arts uh, usable, right? Because when the baton is here, I, I cannot punch with my left hand, right? But here, if the baton is here, you can punch with your left hand. So you kind of have the, you kind of have your, I guess, unarmed combat um, available. Another thing is that the uh, the baton on your weak hand is very good as like a counter, you know. So if somebody's trying to hit you with something else, it's very easy, right? It's very easy to counter, or you block here, counter things like that. It's you know it's kind of a defensive in nature, I would say. Um, that's you know that, that, that's that's never a bad thing to have. Um, now a con is that. Because you're going to put the baton in your weak hand and it's not your strong hand, you really need to practice to make sure you get that right there. <laughs> you need to make sure you got you got to practice to get that deployed because it's not your strong hand. So you got to practice a lot to make sure this is deployed successfully. But I would say in general that the baton in the weak hand, um, it's better suited for defense because you don't have a lot of atta uh, attacks and options to condition the enemy. So when we say condition the enemy, it's like, um, so you're fighting somebody and you jab them in the face, it's a good punch, right? And then you do it again, right? What you're trying to do is you're trying to make them expect that, right? And typically with the baton on the weak, on the strong hand side, you can do a lot of things. You have a pretty good jab actually, you know, you can make the enemy condition and afraid of that. But with the baton on the weak hand side, you don't really have a lot of attacks to condition the enemy. You know, yes, you can swing at the enemy with this. You can, you know, power strike, but that's, you know, more of a counter. And yeah, you could kick, but again, it's coming from a defensive position. So it's like you're not really leading the fight. You're kind of responding to it, which everybody's different. Somebody might not like to do that. That might make some people uncomfortable, but I mean, every warrior should be good in anything, but, you know, it's just... Uh, it's just better suited for defense. You don't have uh, a lot of attacking options to help uh, condition your enemy to commit to a certain action. Now, another thing in general for the baton is that it requires a dedicated uh, place or pocket on your preferred side. You know, so um, I, I didn't really see a holster for this, and honestly, that's probably unnecessary. But you know, something this small, you can just put it in your pocket. Um, so you have to decide which which pocket it is but it would be dedicated so nothing else can really be in that pocket not your wallet or phone or car keys anything like that it has to have its own dedicated pockets so you know exactly where it is now in terms of attraction there are really two major methods um, the first one is kind of like a single hand retraction where you kind of just let it fall and you hold the button and then you'll kind of press it against your thigh and then you would have to kind of uh, flip it and then put it in your pocket upside down. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you need your second hand for some reason, some alternate task. 
Now, the second method, which I think is going to be a little bit better, is uh, kind of like a two-handed method. So you you uh, have it extended. You're going to place it on your palm on your other hand. Turn this over. Press the button. Retract it. Flip it over, and then put it in your pocket. And that one, I, I like that because it's uh, more gross motor motor function. You know, you're 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 more hands, more dexterity. So it will be retracted faster, I think, than the uh, single hand retraction. But again, with the free hand on the single hand retraction, that's kind of up to you if you have a use for that for some reason. Um, I mean, probably train both, but if you want to know the fastest one, it's definitely going to be the two handed retraction. And if you can think of a scenario where you need a free hand, then you can certainly practice the single hand retraction method as well. Funny thing I noticed about this is that uh, with the button, I don't know if my thumbs are just really short, but it kind of hurts after a while, you know? <laughs> after a while when I have to retract this, it just kind of hurts my thumbs. So I don't know, you guys let me know if you have long thumbs, short thumbs. But yeah, if I practice for too long, I just really feel my thumbs, not, not in using the weapon, but in just trying holding the button to retract the baton. All right, well, that is the end of my review for the ASP Talon Baton. Uh, Talon Lock BA three four one BLK. Um, again, I have no training. I just had to use Fight IQ. I'm sure there's a lot of things I missed, but you know I'm happy to hear about that. I'm happy to hear about that. I'm happy to study that. But I hope that as a sort of beginner's perspective um, helps get you started on this. If you're interested in this kind of martial art, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Subscribe. You better. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>